So far, we have looked at the five considerations of sustainable design, functional, maintainable, environmentally sound, cost-effective, and visually pleasing. Now let's see how they apply in a home landscape project. In this landscape, there are two challenges. One is a neighbor's wall that has collapsed or is collapsing. And you can see here on the left-hand side, uh, the wall is a timber wall. We have a lot of boulders patching, kind of holding this other wall up. And on the other wall is our wall. This is my backyard. And you can see that it's starting to age. It's looking a little, little tired. And it actually was starting to collapse. Here you can see a couple of problems with this landscape. We have some steps that are looking pretty poor. They're actually uh, a little bit dangerous and they require mulching every year to fill the timber walls over here on the left side. Uh, we have kind of a tired fence that needs to be uh, removed and either updated or just eliminated altogether. So a couple things uh, that we need to do and the landscape itself needs to be renovated but the most important part was the wall. So we want to start with those five considerations of sustainable design and think about uh, as we're redesigning this, the functions that we need to accomplish, how we're going to take care of this, how we're going to reduce maintenance too, and being environmentally sound, how much money all this is going to cost, and then what do we actually want to see. So from a functional standpoint, our considerations for this project was most importantly that the wall supports the slope and to improve the accessibility on the stairs so they're safer, they require less maintenance as well. We also like a kitchen garden. That is a garden where we grow herbs and vegetables, and it's called a kitchen garden because it's usually closest to the door that's closest to your kitchen. So you can step outside while you're cooking and pick some fresh herbs or vegetables to add to your meals. We need a utility area that includes things like a composting area as well as rain harvesting areas and a wood pile and then it needs to be dog friendly. From a maintenance standpoint we want the wall material to be low maintenance. We are tired of staining timber walls and, uh, and also dealing with mulching the steps and we want it to be durable. We want this to really last hopefully longer than we do <laughs> And we want to be able to shovel steps and landings. We, have, uh, we need to have good accessibility around the house, and these steps are important for that. Easy access to the beds. The, being a gardener, uh, I wanted to be able to weed and plant in these beds easily. And then curved bed lines with some poly or black plastic edging for easy mowing. From an environmentally sound standpoint, our considerations including amending the soil for maximum plant health. We want to do that before we plant. It's much easier than doing it after you plant. We want to harvest rainwater and minimize runoff. Also, the plants really need to be able to thrive in the site conditions that we have and the growing conditions. And then offer nutritious plants and habitat for pollinators and other beneficial insects as well, including birds. From a cost-effective standpoint, we're thinking about proper installation. We're actually hiring someone to do the wall installation. Using quality materials, we're keeping a very simple design, not unlike the design that we have now, but we want to retain that hillside. Remember that. That's first and foremost function. We need to do proper site analysis so that we understand the site and uh, also proper plant selection for the site. And that includes saving and dividing and then replanting plants that we want to keep. And the visual appeal, again, this is kind of the more subjective, fun part of it. We want diverse plant life that includes edible plants. So this would be berries and vegetables and trailing vines and herbs. We want to add some electrical capabilities so we can have a water feature and also some lighting in the back area. Uh, we also want some small dark mulch so that it doesn't really take over the show. We want the plants to be the show, not the mulch. And then attractive wall material and removing and or replacing the fencing. This is the design uh, that was produced 
and it was used I used a software program called Dynascape it's a commercial professional product uh, you can also just draw these by hand as well and the area that we're talking about is really just this area over on the end here this long narrow space that is to the west of the house so it's not a very big area but sometimes that can actually present its own challenges because you're working with very uh, very tight spaces this space is no wider than 15 feet from the back of the house to the property line so not a lot of space but a lot of spaces within it we did a site survey with elevations took elevations and also got a bid our contractor was a University of Minnesota alum named Jim Peliquin, who was from Premier Landscaping and Design in Lionel Lakes, Minnesota. And he came out and did some measurements. And then we also called, of course, to uh, check with our Xcel Energy folks to make sure we weren't digging into any power lines. And then we did a, uh, an elevation drawing. This is like taking a slice out of the landscape and showing how the elevation changes from a side view. And this has to be engineer approved. So that was one of the benefits of working with uh, Jim, the professional installer and landscaper, is that he could actually go and do the approval on that with uh, a colleague that he worked with. And then this was reviewed by and permitted by our city. Existing plant materials were, uh, we kind of determined what plants were worth keeping, dug them up, divided them if it was a uh, if needed, and then potted them up temporarily to hold them during the project. Offered them to fellow gardeners, composted some of them, they weren't worth keeping, and these plants were kept in the shade in the containers and then watered regularly. And they were also labeled so that we remembered what they were. So we did some demolition initially, and you can see the old wall going down. You can see the uh, soil profile now at this point. And then this is, uh, they've moved a lot of the soil in this larger picture over toward the house. And here you can see that they're putting, starting to put in the retaining wall. Building the wall was very important. This is a tall wall. It was about nine feet tall at its tallest standpoint, which is why we needed a permit from the city because it was over four feet tall. That's something that our contractor knew, that, uh, that Jim Peliquin knew, which is another reason for using a contractor for a complicated project. And here you can see that they're putting in uh, some geogrid. This is a, a kind of a webbing that reaches back into the soil and it's tacked down to a course of the wall and a course is one row of blocks. And, uh, and the tension between the weight of the wall and pulling that geogrid back into the soil and the weight of that soil holding it in there helps to strengthen the wall. The long sock covered uh, pipe that you see is, um, is for water movement and uh, it's drain tile basically and it's to move water away from the wall. Uh, water pressure is very damaging to walls and so contractors want to move that water away and this will has holes in this pipe that's inside the sock. The sock keeps the, keeps the pipe filtered and clean and uh, then it moves any water, goes into that pipe and it moves it away and disposes of it on another end of the property away from the wall. Here's the wall going up. And the final caps are being put on using an industrial adhesive. And now the best part, the before and after pictures. So let's think about functional. Before we had our timber wall, the timbers were failing, the wall was starting to tip and fail. Uh, and after, here we have our new wall. So the hill is supported, we have improved accessibilities via the steps, and around the beds. Those were all functions that we needed. We have a utility area now. Now this isn't part of the wall actually, but it became part of the landscape. And we have a composting barrel, we have a rain harvesting rain barrel, and uh, some fencing here that we've planted some clematis on that helped to separate our property from our neighbors. And the utility area also functions as a place for our wood pile. 
We have dog friendly landscaping, another very important function. And the kitchen garden. So the kitchen garden is located just outside the sliding door from the kitchen. And here we have beans and tomatoes and herbs and other edible plants. So it's easy to harvest on the fly while you're cooking. Before and after maintenance considerations. Before we had, we had to stain the timber wall. We had to refill the steps with mulch every year. And it was really just a lot of extra work. So now with the new block wall, we don't have to do any sealing or staining of the block and uh, we don't have to fill the steps anymore and we can actually remove the snow easily using a shovel so that that's great and then also the beds are really are sized well for really easy care we put an edging around the grass area so this is the sod going in you can see we're watering it and it's got black edging around the edge that makes it really easy to mow so before and after environmentally sound considerations. Before, we really had a lot of issues with, with the turf. Uh, we had a lot of problems with compacted soil. Uh, the timber walls were starting to fail, so we were losing soil. We didn't have a lot of great plants in the garden. And so after uh, we did this, we amended all the soil. Uh, we also harvest and retain water right now using rain barrels and have proper plant selection, which includes plants for beneficial insects. We compost, we have several composting uh, bins, and we also harvest rainwater. And there's our rain barrel, this is one of them. Uh, we have a number of them on the property, but this one happens to be a wine cask, which is kind of cool. The soil health, we amended it. Uh, we had clay soil, like a lot of gardens in Minnesota, we amended it with compost to improve the drainage, to add air porosity into the soil, and to reduce the compaction of the soil, all allowing for water to percolate down and be retained on the property. We grew plants for pollinators and beneficial insects, and established habitat for beneficial insects as well. And this includes uh, including plants that uh, will will provide beneficial habitat, places for insects to overwinter, and also, of course, plants that provide uh, quality nectar and pollen for uh, bees and other animals. Before and after cost-effective considerations. Before, we had this wall that was failing, a major cost problem. And after, we've done proper implementation with a certified and uh, professional firm they, we kept a kind of simple design which made it easier and then we also planted the right plants in the right place and for the right purpose. So all those were important in uh, thinking of cost effectiveness. If you're putting in plants that are not suitable to the site, they're not going to thrive and you're going to end up taking them out which is not very cost effective. And plants were spaced per their mature size to reduce crowding of plants and potential removal. It also reduces pest issues when plants have enough air and enough room around them to grow to their full size. And also they perform better if they have more space around them. So these are three grasses. Their mature size is 24 inches and you can see that they're spaced accordingly so they can grow to their full size. Circles represent 24 inches. We use extra boulders for steps as well. And that was a good use of some of the extra boulders that were just holding up the old wall as it was that was failing. And this uh, created a nice link between our yard and our neighbors. So how much did this all cost? Uh, it was uh, a lot of money to actually do it. The implementation itself was $15,000. We had some permit and uh, permit fees. It took about five weeks and it took really about 10 years to design it and negotiate it within our household. And that new plant budget is kind of ongoing, but lots of benefits. We have fruits and vegetables and flowers. We've used this uh, for lots of presentations, just like this one, and also some workshops, lots of photos, and uh, been on some garden tours and a couple of good books. Before and after visual appeal considerations. Uh, before we had, it was cute. It worked out pretty well. This is a little pond that was built. But after we had lots of diversity of plants, we added that electrical 
which gave us lighting as well as a water feature. We used a small dark colored mulch and uh, a, a attractive wall material and then we removed the fence. Last but not least, we added the water feature with the electrical. We also had some lighting for not only for attractive aesthetics, but also for safety at night. We created and put installed some sitting boulders, places that you can sit in the garden, and then also added lots and lots of containers. So those are the five considerations of sustainable design, and this is a case study using those in a home landscape. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you can utilize some of this information for your next project.